Today, I'm going to talk about Markov chains. Let us start with an example. Assume there's a website that has only three pages. Page A, the home page. Page B, the product page. And page C, the contact page. On any given visit, a user is on one of these three pages. But which page they visit next depends only on where they are right now, not on where they have been before. In other words, if we know which page they are on right now, we can predict the likelihood of where they will go next. For example, if a user is currently on page A, suppose there is a 60% chance they will go to page B, a 20% chance they will stay on page A, and a 20% chance they will go to page C. I'm going to represent this in a diagram using weighted arrows. The arrow begins at the current page, which we refer to as the current state, and it points toward the page or state that might come next. These pages are called states in the context of Markov chains, as that's the standard terminology used. Let's take another case. If a user is on page B, there's a 50% chance they stay on page B, a 10% chance they go to page A, and a 40% chance they go to page C. Again, we use arrows with numbers to show these transitions like this. Now, from page C, we get this. Now looking at all these transitions in one diagram, we get a complete picture of how users move between pages. This diagram is what we call a Markov chain. Yes, the concept is that simple. Now, let's talk about one very important property of Markov chains. The future state in a Markov chain depends only on the current state and not on the complete sequence of past states. Mathematically, the probability of visiting a certain page depends only on the page the user is on right now, not on the pages they visited before. This is known as the Markov property. So here, we don't have to track a long sequence of actions. Let's understand this better. Suppose a user visited page B first, then page A, and now they are on page C. What's the probability that they will go to page B next? Well, we don't need to worry about the first two steps. We just need to look at where they are now, which is page C. And according to our transition rule, there's a 30% chance they go to page B. That's it. This is the heart of Markov chains. Another important property is that the sum of all outgoing arrows from any state should be equal to 1, which means if you add up all the probabilities of moving from one page to any other page, including staying on the same page, the total should always be 1, right? This makes sense because these numbers represent probabilities, and the chance of going somewhere from a given page must always be certain, or one. For example, if you're currently on page A, and the chances of going to page A again, page B, and page C are 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and 0 0.2 respectively, then adding them gives you one, which is exactly what we want. Now. Just to keep things simple, we're only focusing on basic Markov chains here. There are more advanced types, but I won't be considering them in this video. We will try to keep things simple. Now that we've got a basic idea of what a Markov chain is, let's try something fun. Imagine we simulate a user browsing the website for 10 steps, starting from page A. At each step, the user moves from one page to another, based on the transition rules we defined earlier. Once the 10 steps are done, we count how many times the user ended up on each page. Then, we divide those counts by 10 to get a rough idea of how likely it is for the user to be on each page. For instance, if they landed on page A four times, page B three times, and page C three times, the probabilities would be 4 upon 10 for page A, 3 upon 10 for page B, and 3 upon 10 for page C. But what if we repeat this process not just 10 times, but say 100,000 times? Will the probabilities keep changing forever? Surprisingly, 
No. If we run the simulation for long enough, the probabilities tend to settle down to fixed values. This stable set of values is known as the stationary distribution. It tells us how likely a user is to be on each page in the long run. And these values don't change anymore as time goes on. Noise! We've managed to get the stationary distribution by running a simulation. But let's be honest, that's not the most efficient way to do it, especially if we want accuracy or need to work with larger systems. Plus, how can we be sure that the result we got is the only possible stationary state? Just because our simulation converged to one set of probabilities doesn't automatically mean that's the only stationary state. In theory, a Markov chain could have no stationary state where the probabilities never stabilize. They keep changing values forever, or multiple stationary states, which means we can have two or more different stable distributions that are possible depending on where you start. This is where linear algebra gives us a smarter and faster solution. We can represent the entire Markov chain using a matrix, which we call the transition matrix. In this matrix, both the rows and the columns represent the pages, and each entry shows the probability of jumping from one page to another. For example, the first row, which corresponds to transitions from page A, has values 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and 0 0.2. Similarly, the second row, for page B is this, and the third row for page C is this. We usually label this matrix as capital P. Now let's take things a step further and bring in some linear algebra. We'll create a row vector called pi, where each element tells us the probability of the user being on a particular page. For example, if we assume the user starts on page B, then pi would be 0, 1, 0 since the user is definitely on page B and not on the others. Next, we multiply this vector with the transition matrix P. The result is a new vector that gives us the probabilities of the user being on each page after one step. We can take this new vector and multiply it again by P to get the probabilities after two steps and keep repeating this process. Now, if a stationary distribution exists, then at some point, the vector we get after multiplying with p will stop changing. In other words, the input vector and the output vector will become the same. This means pi times p equals pi. Oh my god. If you've seen linear algebra before, this should remind you of something. Yes, it's the same as this eigenvector equation. When the eigenvalue is 1 and we arrange it this way, we get exactly the condition for a stationary distribution. So, we say that pi is an eigenvector of the matrix P, corresponding to the eigenvalue 1. But since pi is a probability distribution, we also add another rule which says that the sum of the elements in pi must be 1. Of course, I have already explained that before. Solving this system gives us the stationary distribution for our Markov chain. This final distribution tells us how often, in the long run, the user will be on each of the pages. And by solving it this way, we can also check whether there are multiple stationary states. We just look for more than one linearly independent eigenvector with an eigenvalue 1. Isn't that awesome? Now, let's take the result we just found using linear algebra and compare it with the one we got earlier from the simulation. Oh, boy. Look at that. They match pretty closely. That's a great sign, because it confirms that our understanding of Markov chains is on the right track. By the way, every time you search on Google, millions of pages are competing for the number one spot. But Google doesn't roll dice to decide. It uses math. At the heart of the original page rank model is a Markov chain, where each web page is like a state in a network and links act as transitions. If you follow enough links, you eventually land on a stable pattern, a stationary distribution, which mathematically comes from the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue 1. That vector is what decides which pages get the most weight, 
and the one with the highest value wins the top rank. But real-world Google ranking goes far beyond this elegant model. While PageRank was foundational, modern search engines weigh hundreds of signals, not just who links to whom. If this video gets 4,000 likes, then I will make another video on different types of Markov chains and their advanced properties. So.